Welcome to part two of Straw Bale Gardening. We're at Richard and Kathy Wozniak's home where we're going to tour their straw bale garden that they use for all their vegetable gardening. And as a bonus, we're gonna get some container gardening, which is in their, the front of their house. Okay, here's the, um, we were talking about in the straw bale gardening uh, workshop, we were talking about using this bales a second year. So we built, um, out of leftover wood, we built a um, containment area because the as the bales decompose, they kind of fall apart. So we had to contain them so they don't spread all over the place, but you can still plant in them. And what I did was just spread the dirt potting soil on top of the bales and planted uh, bush beans and as you can see they took off are doing well and I'm harvesting and then I, I just put whatever extra plants I have a neighbor gave me this pepper plant and it's already setting peppers stuck it in the bale I stuck a sweet potato in there that was sprouting to see what was happening and uh it's growing. I don't know what's gonna whether it's just gonna make me a nice big vine from one sweet potato. Or it's gonna give me other sweet potatoes. I don't know. That's. I have a, a question. Surprise. Yes. Um, this material that Richard put in here was this just something you had around the house? Yes. There's. Um, it's got room to breathe. Uh, along the sides, there's openings. Was that intentional or is that just? No, that's okay. just because that's the material that we had on hand. Okay. I don't think you need um, airflow. Okay. To get it to work. But it does allow it to breathe and it'll right. keep it from getting over, over wet. You, right. And this bale, this one was really decomposing, so I stuck potatoes in here. The potatoes grew, bloomed, the vines died, and now I have uh, more potatoes coming up, hopefully from one of the potatoes that are in the bale. Hmm. I don't know. This is a first for me, so. So that's what this one is? Yep. That's right here? what that one is. Okay, yep. but you had four? I had five. Five. One, two, three, four, five okay. different uh, potato varieties. It was, they're the small potatoes. And you just so, dug down into the yeah, straw. Yeah, I just stuck my hand down just like this. Mm -hmm. I can feel a potato. You need to show this right here. Oh, look, a potato. I think you succeeded. Yeah, me too. <laughs> oh, there's a potato. I feel more. I feel, wow, I feel a lot more potatoes. Oh my look gosh. At this. Huge. Look at this. Look at this. Now, I thought these were supposed to be small potatoes, but I guess I, I thought guess you wrong. have. And, so, and you just dug down into this yes, second year bale yeah, yeah. and put and one put, that put I... a seed potato, yes, mm -hmm. in there. And mm -hmm. then I'm not going to, I don't want to pull I'm, them all up because. I'm guessing that one grew from, from one, one of the potatoes. One of these, yes, yeah. yes. Yeah. yeah. Because the main reason I wanted to do this is because those purple potatoes are so expensive. So yes. I wanted to grow my own. So. Yeah. Well, obviously it worked. Obviously. <laughs> so, And this, I was going to try lasagna gardening. And I started with some straw and dirt and compost material. And then I decided, nah, I'm not going to do that. So this is growing from like zucchini ends, uh, maybe cantaloupe rinds. I just threw them in there and covered them with straw. So I don't know what that's going to be. That's going to be a surprise. Well, I know I'm going to get a winter season out of these bales. I don't know about that one, but I'm going to try before I, where they're totally decomposed and then just use them as mulch. That one is beautiful when you dug down in there. That you could probably use as compost that you mixed yeah. someplace. If you have a right. raised bed someplace, right. you could mix that as compost in top and well, I'll down tell to you. about four inches or so. That is beautiful stuff. I can't Look at this. 
Look at this material. This is fantastic. And I know just what I'm going to do with that. And I'll show you. Let's walk over and I'll show you what I'm going to do with that. So what I did over here, this is called my fence garden. And I would take um, the used potting soil from the containers out front. And I just dumped it on top of the rocks. And then I have a lot of leaves from my neighbor's tree. And I put that on top of the potting soil. Uh -huh. Mixed it in a little bit. But I still don't want to dig because it's rocks. So I took... So uh, how, how deep would you say that is? Maybe three inches, four inches? Yeah, four inches tops. Okay. So I took, and we have gophers, so I took one a gallon pot some of them this one has a lot of holes so i didn't cut this one out but some of them only have a few holes so on that i cut the bottom out and i put wire um the hardware cloth on the bottom so the gophers couldn't get there i set it i kind of nestled it well this one i just set on top but the rest of them I tried to nestle down in here mm -hmm. and then I planted seeds oh so you also planted seeds in yeah. seeds in the pots in the filled the um pot with good potting soil nestled it down and then I planted seeds and then they sprouted and okay grew. the tomatoes I planted in the pot were seed leans you know that I had started from seed well, clearly their roots have gone down below. <laughs> right, obviously. So I planted two different type of cucumbers and cantaloupe and watermelon, I think, of pumpkins. You can see the pumpkins on the vine. Yeah. Flowers. See and... over here, look at this. See what she's holding it up with? It's a used vegetable bag from the store. And as you can see, we have success. Well, we have a, because this is an English cucumber. And I think I left it on the vine a little. Oh my goodness, I didn't realize it was that big. Look how long that thing is. Yeah, can you get to the stem? Well, that's so, about five pounds. <laughs> and if anyone, if you guys want this, this is all yours, because I don't think it's going to taste good, because it was way too big. But. So this might be compost, and this is my composter that I've had for 20 plus years. And I just throw all my vegetable trimmings, um, and I weed a lot of melons, so all the melon rinds go in here. What else? When I peel potatoes, grape carrots, whatever, it all goes in here, and then with green stuff, so your kitchen waste goes yes. in as well. Yeah, and also some more leaves when I think I need them. Mm -hmm. Just put them in there. And th this was up to here with when I um, did the trim the tomatoes over there. Mm -hmm. And you can see how it composts. It really works. And also that, I spread that on the outside of the fence. You know, when it was twice a year, I'll uh, move it. I'll just move it over here. So I'll lift this off and I'll take this material and put it on the bottom and then the compost will be in the bottom and I put it on the other side of the fence. I don't so know So you why. don't actually turn the inside? Nope, I just... Okay, I'll, you just, just let it go. Once in a while I do because that's why I have my pitchfork but mm -hmm. most of the time I... Uh, just let it go. Just let it go. And it really does it. It smells a little bit when you take the lid off but... Um, you can't smell it. I can't smell it anyhow. I've never had any complaints. I can't complaints. smell anything now. I've never had any complaints from the neighbors. So, And I see you have cardboard that you put under the bottom. Yes, and just so I wouldn't have to dig the compost out of the rocks, mm -hmm. you know, when I move yeah. it to make it easier, cleaner. Mm -hmm. And this has, we have some peppers here coming out of a, wow, this pepper plant. And I don't know why they're purple, but they do. Every time, I guess they're supposed to be purple. And this is just in a gallon pot. So no special, no digging. 
no dick garden. But it obviously the roots have gone down below. Right, because yeah. it either has a lot of holes in the bottom or it doesn't have a bottom. I don't right. tell which. Mm -hmm. And then I always plant flowers because those black butterflies, what are they, swallow? What are they? The pipevine swallowtail? Yes, mm -hmm. they love them. And bees. Well, you get yeah. your pollinators that way. Right. And you've companion planted. You've put some other things besides flowers in here. Right. Well, this is going to be my hedge. These are, this is, uh, I think Nadina is the scientific name, and I call it heavenly bamboo because when it grows up, it gets red berries oh. and white flowers. The birds don't eat the berries, but it's still, it's really pretty. Uh huh. And it's really easy to grow, drought tolerant. So, so really, I've planted the garden among the bamboo, <laughs> and this is not the bamboo that's bad that will take over. You know how bamboo? Yeah. You have to confine it. This you do not. Oh, that's good. Yeah. So. So you'll continue to be able to companion plant for quite right, a while. Put right. More, right. Put more garden right. varieties in here. Right. And also over here. I had some leftover concrete blocks, so, and I think I had, I had some seedlings left, so I just stuck the blocks along the fence, filled it with dirt, potting soil, and planted, this is cantaloupe, a different variety of cantaloupe than mm -hmm. this, although they look the same, but they're not, and this is watermelon, so far I haven't. This one. Yes, the mm -hmm. different leaf is yeah. watermelon. Leaf is watermelon, and then, of course, marigold and basil. Any good gardener <laughs> plants marigold and basil. So this so is. So tell us about this. <laughs> <laughs> this is a jungle. This is first year straw bales. I planted cantaloupe here. As you can tell, it's taken off because I like cantaloupe, and I'm determined to grow can. Oh, look, I have a cantaloupe. See, it's hiding here. Oh my gosh, it's good size. Yeah. Really good yeah. size. So that, and there's little ones. Here's a little one right here. So I guess that's working. Mm-hmm, a little baby. Yep. And we use- Oh, here's one here too. Another one? Yeah. So two. See, when I come out here Three. in this bright sun, I can't see. So it's this is a nice cloudy day so I can see what's so out here. So you get surprises. Yes. <laughs> and on the concrete blocks that we use to hold up our straw bales, I planted one zucchini plant and flowers. And I've gotten a... Because zucchinis are so prolific that I only wanted one. Oh yeah, there's one down here, so... Mm -hmm. Yep, that's doing well too. You know. So this is the structure that you talked about, that Richard talked about, right. where he used the cement blocks as mm -hmm. a to bolster and hold these straw right. bales up. And then we're going to have to change something next year. And because, here's the wire too. Right. But you can't get um, treated what is this, a two, two by, by four. four. You can't get treated two by four, so if you look at that one, it's a good thing he has those braces because the ones on that end, for some reason, are bowing. Hmm. So we're gonna have to figure out something next year. I don't know what to um, keep that from happening. Mm -hmm. I really wanna try the reinforced wire for tomatoes, but mm -hmm. we'll see what happens. Mm -hmm. What else do we well, have? Well, your in tomatoes here? are gigantic. My gosh. These are cherry tomatoes, and cherry tomatoes always do this. So we'll have plenty of cherry tomatoes. These are beans. I just like different stuff, so they're um, somebody's eating it. These are an heirloom purple bean that they turn green when you cook them. This is a Roma tomato, and that's taken over my beans. These tomatoes are, I like slicers. These are um, Cherokee, no, not Cherokee purple, brandy wine. And they are really, heirloom tomatoes are a pain. They really are, they just are. 
I can't explain it. My sister is trying them too. She's growing an Anna Russian. And they, they're the first ones to get diseases. They're the first ones to get, they mm -hmm. just, and it goes bananas. I didn't, I didn't trim them. So <laughs> next year I'm going to trim them. So mm -hmm. as you can see, I keep having to trim them. Yeah. To, because they just take over yeah. everything. So that's why I want to try the reinforced wire. What's this? And also I try to plant herbs. This is lemon thyme in the blocks. This is sage. This is mint, which I should never have planted in here because that's going to go nuts. Basil. But you can smell it. <laughs> yeah. Basil, and this is oregano. Oregano really likes it here. It does. So. And you've also got your um, soaker hose. That's how you're oh, watering. Oh, yes. That's how you, if you don't put that in, if I tried, I couldn't put it in here now, so... This is a soaker hose I purchased. It was about $15, and it's way too long, but I just kept doubling it up. And this hose over here is an old hose, one of those expandable hose that they stop working after a while mm -hmm. at the connection. So I just punched holes in it. And then the hardware cloth right here that we just put up here so when we move the bales, it's easier. Well, the hardware cloth keeps out the gophers, and also it helps when we have to move the bales. You just put the dolly right under there and lift it up. And there's cherry tomatoes. Yes, there are. Plenty of cherry tomatoes. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my gosh, they're all through here. I know. They're ripe. Yes, and you have to dig through. Yeah, the, I, I'm left to harvest the cherry tomatoes yes, at yes. the garden and I'm hoping you'll help me. <laughs> yeah, I'm used to it. <laughs> Last year I had uh, sunflowers planted. We only had one layer of blocks, one level of blocks. Oh yes, another also watermelon. Too. No, this is a gray squash. Oh, okay. And it's fighting for sun. Yes, and it's fighting for life. But yeah. I left it in there because it has a squash. Last year we only had one row of blocks. And I planted these sunflower seeds in it. Mm -hmm. And uh, the only good thing about that was that the cherry tomatoes just grew up the sunflowers, so I didn't need any support for them. Huh. But as you can see, it's way too big of a sunflower for these block, and it cracked some of them. But I don't know how to harvest these. Do you? No. Nope. Anybody know? I've, so I've I don't never know. grown them. I don't know. Yours is far farther along than the ones we have in the garden. Yeah. It's so, getting close. Yeah. I don't know. And I left them. I tried cutting them off and just laying them out in the alley, you know, mm -hmm. seed side up, and nobody bothered them. So I guess they don't like them, or the birds. So I don't know. I don't know what I don't to do think with every it. bird would eat them. They're probably hard to get into. Yeah. But. So I don't know what to do with those, but... We'll have to look that up. Oh, also, you can use an old wheelbarrow, old anything to plant in. This was left next door the, while they were renovating that house, and I asked if I could have it because it didn't have a wheel. And they said fine, so I planted flowers in it. So that's another thing for the pollinators. Those black swallowtails love the zinnias. They love them. I haven't seen too many on the marigolds but um they love zinnias and they they're right here in this part where the pollen is yeah and the nectar yes you can you know you can get close enough and just watch them uh -huh. watch them but they have to be here when the sun's out yeah they're not so, nocturnal no so i guess so that's should we go to here. the front and yeah, look at the let's pots let's go to the front and look at the pots oh there's there's asparagus in here. I mean, I know it's in here, but it's actually asparagus. asparagus -y. Yes. <laughs> cut this off. She's got great asparagus there. This one is. Okay, this is asparagus in a trash can because I love asparagus, but the only way to have a well, I thought the only way to have it, you have to have a permanent bed, and I have a rock yard again, and I don't want to dig it up. 
So I saw, when I lived in Georgia, I saw a man that used toters, or trash cans, and he had three of them, and he had asparagus growing out mm. of it. So I thought, well, I'm gonna try it in this little trash can, and it's working. But, you know, it takes, asparagus takes two or three years before you can harvest it. And I'm the only one that eats it, so we don't need a lot of it. So that's why the trash can. Also, asparagus loves tomatoes as companions. And I have Roma tomato in here also. Eh, it doesn't look that great. But it's, oh wow, the stem is really great and it's got tomatoes. So I guess it's going to do okay. Again, zinnias because of the butterflies. And I've also seen hummingbirds on them. This is just growing up birds. Or I don't know, what, how would you say this? Uh, I'm not sure how these would come up. Birds would d drop the seeds? Possibly. Possibly, I don't know. Yep, they're all over this area, so I'm guessing that's what happened. This is a two-in-one cherry. This is semi-dwarf, and I'm not sure whether that's the right thing to do in a trash can. I know you can do dwarf varieties, but I don't know about semi-dwarf, so we're gonna find that out too this year. This is galvanized tubs that Richard painted that just because he wanted to, <laughs> and this has cantaloupes in it. There's two good-sized cantaloupes here, and I also, I think I planted a watermelon seed in here or two because I see little a little watermelon. These are going to be those um, small watermelons, I don't know, individual serving size watermelons. So that's taken off. It, I think it's really too hot out here because it gets direct sun all day long, but if I have cantaloupe, something's working. And I had pumpkin vines in here, and that really fried, so I pulled it out and just replanted. Well, this, this, is, this my, is a really this decorative is, one. Yeah, this is my favorite. You pretend you're at the beach. So, Kathy, tell me about this uh, art you have here. How did you come up with this? Pinterest. Sorry. Pinterest? I, yeah, see... Um, Beth could probably just do it, but I have to have a pattern. And I was looking, this is a cedar fence board. Richard just cut them up for me, ran or um, squared the edges. And then I went on Pinterest and I saw all these different designs and uh, decided to try my hand at it. I'd say and, you oh, succeeded. And that Sweet Peas Garden is from I think when we lived in California, Richard made that. It was on a post in my garden there. Mm. And um, we moved, didn't want to leave it, so we kept the sign part, redid it. And then he made the birdhouse because he likes to do stuff like that. And I like Tweety and Sylvester. And that's our bird feeder. The, we had hanging with various um, types of feeders. So here, what did you plant here? This is this a lemon one. tree. This is a lemon tree. I think it's um, Eureka lemon. And when I bought it, I got it at Costco one year and I was so excited to see a lemon tree. I said, yes, I can plant a lemon tree again in a can. It did produce lemon, lemons and it had so many lemons that it's too heavy. So we had to use an old bicycle inner tube to, you know, with the post, support it so it doesn't fall over and break the branches. So what, what's with the wheels on the bottom? Oh, so we can move it inside because this tree won't survive our winter. So we just roll it inside in the house every night in the winter so it doesn't freeze. Okay, and this is lavender, and I've tried to grow lavender for years and can never grow it. This is Spanish lavender. And I I just like not, 
I don't necessarily use them, but herbs, I just like to brush them and smell them. So it's grown just for pleasure, I guess you would say that. This is mint again. In fact, the mint in the strawberry garden is from this one. You know, I made another plant. This is a new kind of mint. It's called strawberry mint, and it really does smell like strawberries. <laughs> These are mums for decoration that I've had for two years. This one needs to cut way back in pots again, and they keep, they live. I'm surprised. These are seedlings of Bird of Paradise, the yellow. I'm going to see if I can make some new plants and I'm going to put them out back because I don't have any out back. This is a pineapple top. Just when you get a pineapple cut off the top, you take the um, growth, I guess you would say, on the pineapple, the yucky stuff, and then you just set it in water. And this took about six weeks, but it sprouted roots and then I planted it in a pot. This is about maybe six months. And it takes 18 months to get a pineapple, but eventually, hopefully, I'll get a pineapple. And in this pot, I had something growing that got pretty orange flowers. And I asked Beth, come to find out, it was growing a weed. <laughs> so I pulled it out. It was uh, purslane. She told me I was growing purslane, so I pulled it out. And the rest of this, I just... This was a big pot. This was full, so I divided this one. And the, this is an avocado pit. This is an avocado pit. And this is an avocado pit, but the leaves got sunburned because I had it out in the sun, so I just cut it off and it's growing back. So you can plant anything in a pot. Another lemon tree. And this has lemons too, so, but it looks a little yellow, so I think I got to give it some fertilizer. Just a little bit though. You don't want to fertilize a lot in pots. And that's about it. You can just grow anything in pots and you only have to buy one plant and let it get big and divide it. Just divide it. And then you have two or three plants from one. This, whatever this is, I don't know the name of it, but these are expensive. They have, you know, the bigger pots, they're like 50 to $75. So I bought a little one, uh, like I think a $25 one, and I divided it. I have this one, I have one over there, and I have one in the backyard, so. And you have a crepe myrtle here. Yeah, I have two crepe myrtles that I planted last summer and didn't look so hot. I, you know, I didn't know they were going to survive. I mean, didn't know whether they were going to survive because it was just so hot out here, but obviously they're growing. It looks healthy. Yeah. So there's one on the other side too. And the bird of paradise, I can't say enough about this. When we moved in, this was big and ugly. It was like, it's kind of ugly now. It was really, really ugly. So I just, and these... Um, this is hard wood. You can't, I can't cut it down here with these. I have to get a saw or something. It's really hard. So I saved that wood in that wood pile back there. So if I need to build a trellis or something, I can. But anyhow, when we moved in, I really whacked it back. And it, it just so pretty in the, it's like a bush, a shrub in the um, spring when it blooms. This is covered with blooms. The birds and the bees like it. So this is getting ready to get whacked back again. And I'm gonna whack back all them. I wait until the blooms are gone. And just, and then it comes back. I never fertilize, I never water. It's just really a good plant. That's why I'm trying to start the other ones. Have you ever been here when these seed pod pods explode they <laughs> pop they pop in fact they're all over the yard here's here's one now so you can plant anything you want in a pot 
Yeah, you and, could have put your put vegetables out here all right, over the place. Right. I was. We were thinking about putting the straw bales out here, but I think my next project is going to be what you do, the um, troughs. Troughs. I'm gonna. I think we're gonna put one along there and grow something. Uh huh. The galvanized tanks. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yep. So. Yeah, we'll do a little segment on galvanized tanks. Uh, just to show how to put them together and how to get the drainage right. There's different ways and that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. I, I, of course, I have a permanent <laughs> supply <laughs> of those coming because source, I have horses, yes. but, uh, but you can buy them. Also, this plant right there, that was in a pot. I think I got that at the end of season. I always go to Lowe's and Home Depot to their, I call it the dead plant rack, and they have plants that you can revive. That one was in a pot. That is an offshoot of one that was in a pot. It was in a um, succulent pot, a little succulent pot, that big one. Mm -hmm. And let me see, part of it's over here. And it outgrew this pot. I mean, this was in a little pot. It outgrew that pot. Wow. I divided it and planted one part there, one part there, and there's one part in a pot in the back. Well, and I think it's really obvious from looking at your yard that you know how to grow things, well, and they love you. <laughs> <laughs> well, your plants love you. I like to grow things, and this is a good place to grow things, Arizona is. It is. It's a very good place to grow things. I would never have thought that being an Easterner, mm -hmm. but it does, it is a good place. And you've demonstrated that you can grow in anything. Right, if you have a dirt yard. I'm past digging in the ground. Well, I will plant a plant, but no trees, mm -hmm. no garden. I'm not gonna dig a garden. So this is my solution. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much, Kathy. You're welcome. It was a pleasure. I love talking about gardening. <laughs>